Hi, I'm in the process of preparing a display for digital photography for an art show that's taking place next week. And what you're looking at is a mock-up of the layout that I'm going to use. And I want to show you how to set up a layout for yourself, as well as how to gang the artwork up for printing so that you can print the pieces and assemble your own uh, display board so that it, it uh, gives you the results that you pre-visualize here in the mock-up. So let's give this a try and see how well this works. The original template that's given to you uh, might look something like this. You can also make one of your own if you wanted to start from scratch. The point of this whole thing is though that this is to scale so you know exactly how big these things have to be printed in order to fit where you want. And when I first made this thing I realized there were a few mistakes that I wanted to refine it a little bit. So I've been making some changes to try to make the thing look a little bit better and I still have to populate some things. As you do this though to get started with your own make sure the following things are set up and set up properly. Number one, make sure you can view the rulers. If they're turned off, just go under the view menu and turn that on because you're going to need them. Number two, the units that you should be using in the rulers should be reading in inches and if they're not, go to edit, preferences and look for units and rulers. And When you do, the top item there, rulers, should be set to inches not pixels or anything else. And we're done with that. Number three, you should have an info palette down in the bottom right corner. The info palette can be found under Window, Info, and if it's not there, turn it on. You may even want to move it over and dock it, and this is going to make it easy to figure out the size of objects later on. And so as I'm putting these things together, I'll show you how this is working. And our best friend, by the way, is the Move tool and the Cropping tool. The Move tool, we can actually take a, an element like this, and you'll notice this is simply a, a rectangular object, an element, in its own layer that allows me to transform it. When you use the Move tool, you can start moving these things and changing them. Most importantly is when you start changing them, you want to change them to really even inches. This one has just been changed to 11 by 6.7 inches. That's terrible. So I'm going to go back over here and change it to a better shape. How about 7 IN, which stands for inches, and hit the Enter key. And that gives you a nice customized size that you can repeat elsewhere. If I clicked on another element over here, oh, apply the transformation, yeah. You can, hit the you can hit the Enter key or the check mark or just follow that dialog. This uh, element that I have over here, I'm going to try to check out its size. Now right now, right now I can't tell what it is until I, until I start transforming it. When you select it, use a Control T to start transforming it and it shows you the original size. It might show it to you in percentage, but you can always go down here to the Info window and see the sizes that we have here. And this one says eight and a half by six. Okay, that's a slightly odd size. I'm trying to get away with just using things that are very very specific sizes so I'm going to change this to 8 by 6. Now if I do this and constrain proportions is on it's going to shrink both the dimensions at the same time. So if I want to modify one without the other I'm going to turn off constrain proportions and change this to 6 inches. And you can see the results. 8 by 6 I'll hit the check mark and I notice that it's just fallen away from a guideline. So there's the next thing that we really want to do. If you stick with nice even inches, you can use these guidelines and snap them into place so that you can get consistent internal margins around the inside of these objects. And I think this makes a huge difference. If you need to set that up, now that you've got rulers, you can zoom in a little close so you can actually see the readings here along the side. I would like to put a guideline at the bottom of this element. And I do that by grabbing it from the ruler dragging it down and hold the shift key down when you get close and it will snap it to the even uh, increment. In this case that's 23 and a half inches. And I know the next guideline should be at 24 and a half inches if I want to use a consistent one inch margin everywhere so I'll drag it there and now I can take this element and drag it right into place to get these consistent internal margins all the way around. And that tends to work really well. Caption boxes as well. If I've made this an even number of inches. This is going to go to 30 and a half and I'll drag another one down here to 31 and a half and I know this little caption box here should be snapped right about there. So everything's nice and even. Now I'm going to abandon this template and go back to the one that I've got populated because I've already started cleaning this up and I've got some elements that I want to start filling in and I'll show you how to do that now. And it helps to do this and gang up the artwork at the same time. So I've got a picture here. I've got some original pictures here that I could crop and try to use to fill this space so I'm going to see if I can find a good crop and a good photo to put in this place right now. To print this I'm going to print it 
on the 11 by 17 inch size paper. So I'm going to make myself a new print page by going new, blank file, and I'll set it up to be 11 by 17. It's at 300 dots per inch, which is nice resolution and should work well for these smaller pictures. Bigger pictures, I could get away with 200 dots per inch. For these small ones, I'm going to gang them up at 300 dots per inch. Say OK, and there's my blank canvas that I can start dragging these other photos into. But before I do, here's the truth of printing these things. It's not an expensive process, so when I print an 11 by 17, it's always going to leave a little quarter inch margin around the outside. Forgive me, that's going to be an eighth of an inch margin around the outside, but I'm going to take it up to about a quarter inch and be really consistent with it. So I'm going to put in that margin just to be aware of where it is, and I'm actually going to put a layer on top, so I'll use that and paint a margin on top of my photo so I control it and it's nothing accidental. To put a margin in, well, let's use those guidelines again. Grab a ruler, I'm going to drag it down to the quarter inch mark there, and I'm holding the shift key so it snaps right into position and it does not take long to give yourself a consistent border around the outside. Now this is all happening in layer one. I'm going to build some actual white borders around the outside by going to layer two. I've already clicked on this to give myself some black and white and I'm going to fill up this entire layer two with white by holding down my control key and, delete, and hitting the delete key. That fills the entire layer with white. And now to put the border in place, well, doing the opposite here, I'm going to click on the inside and punch a hole by hitting the delete key for the inside part, part of it. And now you can see I've got myself a frame. Control D, deselects. So now I can put the picture in that I want to have. I better make sure I get the right size to this. And just check on this size again. If I click on this element, I, uh, I hit Control T and I look down under Info, it says it's 11 by 7. Okay, I'll hit Escape. And this canvas, this ganged up thing, is 11 across, but I want to make this thing 11 by 7, so I'm going to drag a guideline down to 7 inches right there. And I know that's as tall as it's going to be allowed to be. I also know if I've got to have a, a border around the top and outside edges, I should really make my own border around the bottom. So I'm going to drag another guideline down here and I'm going to paint myself on this I call this layer borders. I'm going to paint myself a little strip just like that on the borders layer. Control delete what that does is fill anything I've selected with the background color and it gives me that border. Control D to deselect. So now I could take this picture I wonder if I can just drag it like this and put it right on the canvas like that and it does. Now notice it's put it on a layer above the border so I'll move it down underneath the borders and now I can use the move tool to try to jockey this thing into position and I have the luxury of changing this crop now I can make it any size that I want and do a little recrop to it and I did want to try to get this thing to be a little closer I don't need to have all that outside edge so I might have it something like this. Now the other way to do this I'm gonna trash this layer for a sec and show you probably a more precise way of getting the crop and getting the size you want double click the original and knowing the size that you have that you want to get it into use the crop tool. I know that I want to make a crop that is going to be 11 inches wide by 17 inches oops by 7 inches tall and I know the resolution of my ganged up canvas I was using 300 dots per inch. All of these things are really important. Good put them into play and when I crop this, it should fit perfectly in this canvas. So I'll give it a try now. And looking at this thing, I wanted to try to get a good close-up and try to use the rule of thirds on this. And so I'm going to take it something like this. Rule of thirds, I would like for her eye to be the main focus. Maybe something like that. Double click. Now if the size of the image had expanded drastically or been reduced drastically, I might be a little concerned. Frankly, if it was expanded, I'd be concerned. As it is, looks like it's about the same size, so it's going to be pretty good. One more thing before I plop it over there. I can go adjust the levels of this picture to try to take advantage of the dynamic range, and I can do that by going uh, Enhance, Lighting, 
levels. Now you can also memorize control L for the future. And there's a little bit of unexploited dynamic range. I can take the top slider and make things a little bit brighter, take the bottom slider, make the bottom end a little bit darker, and I can rock what's in between to try to get a decent contrast for the things that are going on. But that'll do the job for now. And now when I use the Move tool and I move this image in place, it's going to fit perfectly inside of that frame. Okay, So we're just doing things to precise size. I'm going to minimize this and get it out of the way. Now I've got lots of room to print a couple more pictures down here, so I'm going to find some pictures that'll fit. And it looks like I've got a couple of pictures here and here. And to remind myself again, Control T Info tells me this, these are 8x5s. All right. I'm going to go see if I can find a couple of 8x5s and fit them in here. And I know I've got a decent one here. I'll take this one. I'm going to use the crop tool again. This time I'm going to say width of 8 and a height of 5. Resolution 300, same thing. And I'll try to do the same thing. Try to get a decent crop. A little bit of rule of thirds. Good and close up. Hit the check mark, and I've got something that's going to work. Now, when I pull this one in, you'll see we've got a little bit of an issue because its width, well, I could try printing it there, but I don't think I'm going to have enough room down below to get the next one. I'll tell you what, I'll give it a try and see what it can do. I wanted to take uh, this one here. Same thing, 8 by 5 Crop it right about there. Drag it in. Yeah, this is this is going to start getting things cut off. So remember, when you're ganging these things up, you can rotate these things, and they'll print just fine. We're going to cut them all out from the from the background anyway. So I'll grab the rotate handle. I'm holding the shift key down to get nice precision. That's the exact same size, just rotated into a portrait aspect. And I'll do the same thing here. And that's what you do. You try to find the best efficiency that you can to try to print these pictures. And looking at what I have, everything's looking pretty good. I got to remember the sizes that I'm getting. It's going to if it's going to be eight by five, I'm going to drag some guidelines around here. Oh, five inches only ends there. Hmm. And I've got that border around the outside. So I've got to carefully consider this one more time. I'm going to have to paint in a border. If the entire height is from there to there, eight by five is only going to take me so far. If I want to include the border, and I think I do. Otherwise, I could trim it out and not have a border on those particular pictures, have them bleed out to the outside edge with no border. Um, but that's the decision that you have to make for yourself. There we are. So you make that decision and decide what you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and try to print it with a border, so I'm going to try to make it as complex as I can here. And mm, oh, now I realize too, I'm going to cut this top one off at 7. So I've got to give myself a little more space to create a border up there seven and a quarter. I realize that I'm going to want to have them about here. And I'm going to have more margin there. And I'm going to have to actually slice this big picture along this edge. I'm going to use a pencil tool in the borders. And I'm just going to make a couple of little marks to remind myself of where to make these cuts. And if you use the pencil tool and drag it all the way across, here I'll hide this just so we can see what's going on. There's a little gray mark that's gone all the way across there. It's going to remind me where I've got to make the cut. I should paint in the white part too, maybe. Selection, I'm in the borders layer. You know what, I've lost my guidelines and I think I want them back. Window, view rather, guides. And it's nice, it snaps the selection to that area. Control delete, paints the white. Hopefully you can still see, yep, there's that nice light mark that I'm going to do the, the cutting for. And so I better count on this. If I'm going to take this picture here and I really want it to be 8 by 5, I've only got 5 inches total. So in the border layer, I'll tell you what, I'm going to might as well drag another quarter inch over here, paint this thing all the way down. like that. So I'm setting up basically a frame. And if you go to a gallery, most pictures you're going to see, well, I shouldn't say most, I should say many will have a frame. 
this is the way that you control that frame and make it go any way you want it to. So I can take this thing, move it around, treat it, see if I can find that ideal crop and leave the frames in place. This other picture here, I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to measure the rest of this. If this thing is 8 by 5, it's going to get as far as 10. And I'll put my own borders over here again. Leave a quarter of an inch. It's a very generous border. There's, It's kind of a big one, but I think it should do the job. And then under borders over here, I'll paint that all down here. Bit by bit, you build it up. Okay. And I'll take a big step back and see how I have it. Last part of this thing, I guess I want to take this down and I'd like to make sure this is going to be 8 inches in width for these pictures. From 7 to 15 ought to do it. And again, it looks like I'm going to have another quarter inch border over here. So I'll paint that last margin. Again, on the borders layer, control delete. And that is my ganged up artwork. Now I could save this as a JPEG in high quality, send it to the printers, and I'll get three pictures on the one sheet that I'll later trim out. And to make life easy, once again, it might not be a bad idea to put under the borders layer, put a little cut mark. The cut mark will snap to the uh, guidelines that you have so that it makes it really easy to, whoops, undo. Really easy to cut these things out later with or without the guidelines. You won't have the guidelines when it's printed naturally. Okay. Oh. So there's the ganging up. That's the whole process. If I were saving this now as a JPEG, I could use File, Save for Web. Gives me a warning. That's okay. You don't have to save it for web. You could just use a Save As, but I quite like Save for Web because it gives you a little bit of comparison. I can take it to a JPEG, double check its quality. I'll take it to 80%. That ought to be fine. And it tells me how big the final image is going to be, and it's really not too, too bad. It also double checks that size, and at 300 dpi, this should be 3300 by 5100. Say OK, I'd save it and send it out to the printer. Uh, the last thing I may want to do, though, is as I'm ganging all this stuff up, I might want to go back to that original layout that I had. Not this one. Not this one. But this one. And actually try putting these pieces in place just to see how they're shaping up. So my ganged up artwork has been cropped to exactly the right size and it's got the frames in it. And I might want to see that in context up here in place. So see what they look like. Well, I can do that this way. Here's a good trick for you too. I'd like to take a selection and copy this image with the frame and paste it into place on the, on the big mock-up. Uh, right now, because these things are on different layers, that's hard. But I can use File and Duplicate to make a temporary flattened version of the entire image without disturbing the original one. So there's the original down there. There's my temporary image that I can copy and paste from. So I'll take this image and I'll open this one up as well. Better make sure I get the right one here. Yep, something like that. So if I want to get this and paste it into place to see how it looks over there, well, first of all, it really is handy to have your guidelines showing up. So there's the guidelines that I need. If I've done my work right, I'm going to try to making a selection from here and just copy it with Edit, Copy. Whoops. Hope I did that right. Edit, Copy. And then an Edit, Paste. The image is way too big, but remember our transform trick. So if I really want this thing to be 72 dpi, control T, that's 11 by 7. No, nah, that's not what I wanted at all. I'm going to constrain the proportions. I'm going to ask this thing to be, what was that size again? That was, uh, whoops. Undo. I had the wrong thing selected, sorry. Control T. Oh yeah, and it's way too big. Well, maybe it's just as easy to do it this way. Let's just shrink it down. Oh yeah, that's bad. Hold the shift key down so it stays in proportion. Let it snap into position. Hold the shift. And if this thing is working right, we should be able to roughly snap it into place, something like this. Given that this is just a mock-up, if it's a little off, it's not disastrous. 
so I'm just going to say OK, apply. And I've got that thing mocked up. Now this is not what's printing, so like I say, if it's out by a little bit, it's not a disaster. This is just roughly showing you what things are going to look like. But that one's pretty good. I'll try putting another one in here as well. Yeah, let's grab this guy. Because we got everything in a proportion, this is just, again, a copy. Edit. Copy. It's all coming from a flat layer. Back over here. Edit Paste or Control V will put things in place. Control T will let me transform. I can rotate this whole thing by holding the Shift key down to get it the right way. And I'm going to shrink this guy down by holding down the Shift key, putting it roughly into place. I'll try to zoom in on a little bit so I can be a little more precise. Holding Shift, and yeah, it looks like it's going to get to about that size. It's funny that it doesn't snap exactly where I want it to be. It would be nice if it did, but I can live with this. Okay, doke. So you get the idea. There's the whole process, basically building this thing up bit by bit, but in the process of doing this, we're getting a really precise mock-up, and we are getting the ganged-up artwork that we can then send to the printers. And then, once it's printed, we cut out the real deal and put it all together. So it's a very elaborate tutorial. Hope that helps you out, gives you an idea of what the, the process is, and teaches you a little bit along the way. Good luck. Let's see what you can make.